Hey guys, I am back with another video. Please make sure to like and share this video. Please leave a comment and subscribe. Hey guys, this video is an update from the original one. I just had to fix some errors on the previous video. If you guys have any additional information about a celebrity that I forgot to add, please comment below so I can fix it. Keep in mind that I am new at this and people make mistakes. I also want to give a disclaimer, every information I find is not always going to be true. I just find the information about the celebrity and make videos. My channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who don't know who Barbara Payton was, Barbara was an American film actress, best known for her stormy social life and battles with alcoholism and drug addiction. Barbara was born in Clockay, Minnesota, and she was the daughter of Erwin Lee and Mabel Irene Renfield. Payton's family was a working-class Norwegian immigrants who financially struggled to keep their business afloat. Peyton's father borrowed money from his sister to start his own business called the Antlers Court. Her father, the businessman who was closed off and never showed affection to his children and her mother who was the housewife who stayed at home dealing with family difficulties. Peyton's family had a long-standing problem with alcohol. When Peyton's father was drunk, he would lash out and abuse his wife. At age 11, Barbara started to get attention because of her beauty and middle-aged men started to notice it. Her mother encouraged that type of attention and took pride in Barbara's beauty. At age 15, Barbara lost her virginity to a friend's father in a locked bathroom. Some say that she slept with a man at least three more times. Barbara didn't see it as rape as long as he gave her something shiny for her favors, everything was alright. During her teenage years, young Barbara was rebellious and eloped with her boyfriend William Hodge. Her parents decided to annul the marriage, seeing it as an act of teenage rebellion. A few years later, at age 18, Barbara married John Payton, a captain in the Air Force. After his discharge, they moved to Los Angeles, California, and she did modeling and John went to college. In California, Peyton gave birth to John Lee, but motherhood was not for her and wanted to be an actress. The studios took notice and gave her a contract, but it came with a price. Barbara slept her way to the top. Her rise to fame began with her first credited movie called Silver Butt, and then she started to get more movie roles in Trap and Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye, Dallas, and Only the Valiant. Her fame began to skyrocket. Now the bonafide actress, Barbara was eager to embrace all that Hollywood had to offer and dove into the town's nightlife. She began a string of romances, club hopping with producers and movie stars, many of them married. She had a relationship with Ted Briskin, Mickey Knox, Bob Neal, George Raft, Woody Strode, Buddy Anderson, A.C. Lyles, William Hodge, James Cagney, John Ireland, and Mickey Cohen, just to name a few. But the relationship I will focus on is the one she had with franchise Tone, Guy Madison, Bob Hope, and Tom Meal. Her relationship with Bob Hope started off sweet but turned sour. Bob Hope furred and jeweled her and kept her in an apartment while he was still married. But it ended when Bob dumped Peyton, so she ratted him out to the tabloid about their affair. By making this move, she burned bridges with Bob Hope and her contract with Universal was over. Universal Pictures ended her contract because they were concerned that Bob Hope's image would be tarnished. Warner Brothers and Cagney Production gave her a contract and she started to make movies again. With a salary increase and new studio, Barbara was back on the spotlight. Caught up in such a glamorous world, she started to make her social life more important than her work, and it was not long before her fledgling career started taking second place to a reckless, headlong plunge into a passionate love life involving rich and powerful men, many of them with wives and families. In 1950, Barbara met Franchot Tone, and they both fell in love with each other, especially Franchot. Divorced from John Payton, she was ready to move on the Franchot. In October, they announced that they are engaged and he brought her an apartment on Hollywood Boulevard. In the meantime, Barbara was having an affair with her co-star Gregory Peck. After her affair ended with Gregory, she moved on to another co-star, Guy Madison. Barbara and Guy were filming a movie called Drums in the Deep South. She started to flirt and get friendly with Guy even though she was in a relationship. After work, she will spend most of her time with Guy, which Franchot grew suspicious of. He hired a private investigator to spy on Barbara. One night, Barbara and Guy repaired to her apartment to have cocktails, and they had sex. Franchot was spying on them, but he wanted to catch them together, and so he did. He barged in and saw them together. Franchot and Guy exchanged verbal conversation, and Barbara just laughs at the situation. Franchot still wanted to marry her, and the incident was reported in Confidential Magazine. This act almost caused her contract to be terminated by Warner Brothers. In 1951, Tome went on a business trip, and Barbara was at a Hollywood party. There she met Tom Meal. She was immediately struck by Tom's good looks and muscular physique and quickly began a toward affair with him. She moved Tom to her new home and broke off the engagement with Tone. Tone didn't take this lightly because he was still in love with Peyton. So Barbara decided to see both men, 
One night on September 14, 1951, Tone and Peyton were coming to her apartment after a heavy drunk night. They found Neil drunk. Tone and Neil started to fight, but Tone was no match for Neil. Neil pushed him towards the wall and gave him 10 fast punches. Peyton tried to stop it but got punched in the face. Ambulance was called and Tone's face was nearly destroyed. He suffered a concussion, shattered cheekbone, fractured jaw, broken nose, and a rearranged face that required surgery. He remained comatose for 18 hours. The incident ended up in the tabloids and it was not good publicity for Tom or Peyton. Public sympathy went against Tom because he had been a boxer in his younger days. There was little sympathy for Hollywood's bad blonde either. Their careers were as good as finished as lurid stories of the incident splashed across the country's newspapers. Warner Brothers suspended Peyton temporarily, and she lost her role in Lady in the Iron Mask. Tabloids took images of Peyton visiting Tone in the hospital and in a few months, Tone married Peyton. Everyone was shocked because their marriage was doomed. Tone began to realize that Peyton was unfaithful. Their relationship was filled with duplicitous and vengeful acts fueled by obsessive jealousy and game-playing and an almost sadomasochistic feeding off of each other's weaknesses and most fragile emotions. Peyton married Tone out of sympathy because of what Neil had done to him. The relationship only lasted two months. After the relationship was over, Peyton and Neil were back together. In the divorce paper, Peyton named Neil as correspondent, and Tone had evidence. Franchot used explicit photographs to prove his cause of action, and then spitefully mailed dozens of pictures of Barbara in compromising positions with Tom to heads of major studios to destroy her chances of ever working in Hollywood again. She was relegated to such stinkers as 1951's Bride of the Gorilla. Peyton moved to England to find work. She only did two films which were Bad Blonde and Four-Sided Triangle. Producers in England wanted to capitalize on her bad girl image and cast her in low-budget films. She came back to America and told the world that Neil is her manager. They made a film together which was great Jesse James Raid and they tried to tour together, but it didn't end well. They decided to split up. Barbara's relationship with Tom Neal was another exercise in masochism. They were both externally rough and irreverent, and they seemingly had over-the-top sex drives that they indulged often with not a thought or care to the possible consequences. Neal was also said to have an explosive temper, easy to anger and to react in an often physically aggressive manner and for some inexplicable reason, Barbara seemed to enjoy needling him and invoking his anger. The reason why Barbara came back to the state was because of Neil. They were constantly drinking and fighting, and it was distracting her from work. She tried to get her groove back with acting, but she had burned bridges with many Hollywood executives and producers. So she moved back to Mexico with her nine-year-old son and her new husband, George Tony Provas. George was a 23-year-old furniture store executive in Nogales, Arizona. Their marriage only lasted a year. After the divorce from Provas, that's when Barbara started to go downhill. She came back to America, hoping to get back into acting again. But her reputation still haunted her, especially being relentlessly lambasted by powerful gossip colonists like Hannah Hopper and Ola Parsons. Peyton's last movie was 1955's Murder Is My Beat. Being broke and unemployed made her drink a lot more. So in order to solve her problem, she decided to date powerful players in Hollywood. Hopefully they could give her a job. She met a producer that she has dated in the past, but he couldn't do nothing for her but use her for sex and pay her for it. The producer would only pay her $300. She also became a mistress for a gangster named Dick Fortune. She found out that he was about to be busted, so she left him for other men that would pay for her needs. She went back to the producer and slept with him for money, but instead of him paying her $300, he paid her $100, which made Barbara angry because to him she was only worth $100. She felt humiliated and cried about it, but then that's when she realized that she was a whore and she swore to God that men are going to pay dearly for her. In the 60s, she became a high-end sex worker in Chicago. She also lost custody of her son and she was arrested for various reasons such as passing bad checks, shoplifting, public drunkenness, and prostitution. At her lowest point, Peyton was found covered in bruises, sleeping on a Sunset Boulevard bus to stop bench, dressed in nothing but a bathing suit and a coat. Her legendary beauty had vanished, her skin was wrinkled and blotchy, and she had gained a considerable amount of weight due to alcoholism and drugs. During this period, Barbara decided to write a memoir about her life called I Am Not Ashamed. Her autobiography was written by Leo Gild. In the book, Barbara wanted young upcoming actresses to know about her story and to take it as a cautionary tale. What happened to her can also happen to any young actresses. She also mentioned her rise to fame and her downfall. She also spilled the tea about her threesome with Ava Gardner and Lana Turner. She stated that she and those two actresses were caught by Frank Sinatra when they were having sex with each other, and all she could do was to jump out of the window and into the bushes. Frank Sinatra was angry and didn't like it. 
It was also mentioned that she was truly done in Hollywood when she was flaunting her interracial relationship with former football player and actor Woody Strode. The book mentioned the real reason why she lost custody of her son. It stated that she lost her son due to exposing him to profane language, immoral conduct, notoriety, unwholesome activities, and no moral education. The judge ruled in favor of the boy's father and labeled Barbara as an unfit mother, not to mention a thoroughly confused and misguided young woman. She never saw her son again. The author also shines light on Barbara, especially Barbara the world does not know. Barbara loved cooking and would often cook gourmet meals for her husband and friends. She also loved skiing, sledding, and ice skating. After a failed attempt to stop her drinking, she moved back to her parents' house to quit, but it was too late. On May 8, 1967, the 39-year-old former actress died of heart and liver failure. She was found on the floor in the bathroom, unresponsive. At that time, her son was serving in the Vietnam. Barbara's life was sad, but she was also part of her own suffering. Hollywood abused and used her, and after they finished, they threw her out like garbage and Barbara let them do that to her. Yes, she was rebellious and did what she wanted to do and she had talent, but her demons got in the way. She had low self-esteem and she had attention-seeking problems. She could have been the biggest actress like Marilyn Monroe. The fact that she had psychological issues and people didn't want to help her, but watch herself destruct and fade away. Rest in peace, Barbara. Please make sure to like and comment on this video, also share and subscribe. Be back with another video.